Welcome to PC Wits Kits Tech Talk. Today we're looking at my Ryzen 7 1800X overclocking. Basically what I did on this system build. Amazing PC that I put together here. If you haven't watched part one and part two, I'll add the link so you can access those to see how I put it together and some benchmarks as well. Now, one of the things that I really need to point out that's important about this is the motherboard. Without a good motherboard, you really can't overclock properly. The MSI X Power Gaming Titanium has the AMD X370 chipset. That chipset is optimized for overclocking. It is the power enthusiast type of motherboard you would want to get. It doesn't have to be an MSI brand, it could be any other brand, but just make sure that you get the X370 chipset. Any other chipset might not have all the adequate overclocking options and tweaking involved. Now paired with this, I've got obviously an Evo X memory from Geo. I talked about that previously in my part one and part two, and the Cooler Master Master Liquid 240, the uh, radiator, as you can see there, cooling off the CPU. Now all of that together gives me a higher chance of overclocking. Not everybody is going to be able to overclock properly or even overclock at all. It all depends. Plus, there are risks involved. You could damage your system. So please be warned that by doing this, you take full responsibility. Now, I'm going to show you what's available here in the MSI ClickBIOS 5 that I have. It actually comes prepared and enabled for you to overclock. So it's really uh, amazing that manufacturers will now give you the overclocking options. They will give you the capability to easily do that. Right now we're looking at the easy mode screens in the BIOS to make it simple. Now I don't like using these easy modes. I like using the advanced mode. So you can see on the top of the screen there it says advanced F7. So if I hit F7 then it's going to switch this mode into an expert mode basically. So I can get into the fine details on what to tweak. Otherwise the easy mode doesn't show you those options and then you're going to be wondering well where is everything? I don't see the same options. Well make sure you're in the advanced mode. Once you're in the advanced mode I clicked on OC on the side here on that button and then I got the overclocking settings. You can see there it says expert at the top the CPU frequency, I scroll down to that, I hit enter and I put in 41, which is 41 times uh, the base clock. So 41 times 100 is 4100 and that's where I am at. Now there are other settings that you can set as well, such as I've seen people disable the CPU spread spectrum, increasing the load line calibration to a higher mode that will give some more power there. Disable CPU turbo mode so that we are locking it in to that frequency and there's no throttling going around. Uh, especially the power saving options, if you disable those, that'll help less throttling. And um, increasing the voltages, I've seen people increase those in small increments. Um, to give a little bit more uh, juice basically because you know as you overclock you need a higher voltage and that's what I had to do right I had to increase the voltage for the CPU now as you can see on the screen going further down the list the DRAM frequency that I set to is 2667 okay so I did not use the XMP profile you can see there it says disabled um, usually you would dis enable that okay now on mo most boards if they have a good bias update they have um, you know supported all these different memory configurations you wouldn't have to go in and say okay what memory frequency do I want this at what are the timings but in my case I had to because the XMP profile wasn't really working hundred percent there so I selected DDR4 2667 from the DRAM frequency and it entered that and I also went into the uh, DRAM frequency settings and uh, the configuration there, the timing, sorry, and I put in the 16T there you can see there for the timings and, um, and then these are as per the specs on the memory module. So on the box when I bought the memory it said 16, 16, 16, 36, I actually said that on the box. So then I just took that and put it in here manually myself. So that way I know that it's putting in the right support for that. Under the digital all power, and again on your motherboard, if you're not using an MSI, it might be slightly different, but I left these all on auto actually. But sometimes I've seen people uh, increase the load line 
calibration control, for example, instead of auto, they'll maybe increase that mode to a high or very high or ec you know extreme mode. Uh, I didn't have to do that. Now on the CPU core voltage, I put that to 1.4125 volts. Okay, I didn't want to start off too high unnecessarily. So always start low and make your way high. That's you know you don't want to start too high and uh, and fry your 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 processor, right? So always you know make it nice and easy and careful carefully. Um, the DRAM voltage actually was on the box. It actually said 1.35 volts is what you should be using if if you're um, using a frequency that is high. And so I used what it said on the box of my memory that I bought, 1.35 volts. So I didn't really do anything out of the ordinary there, but I forced it in there just to make sure that it had the right voltages. Now, when it comes to fans and the control for the pump of the uh, radiator, the Cooler Master Master Liquid 240 millimeter that I'm using, I have the uh, uh, fans of that radiator going up full blast. I've got the pump going there at 2500 RPM, so that's full blast. And then the other system fans also pretty much on the highest setting except for system um, fan 3 and 4 I didn't really have those too high so I've got a, a wide combination of fans on the radiator at the back of the case I've got one fan you know getting all the exhaust hot air out of the case and one additional fan at the front of the case to bring in some cool air okay so we got some circulation going another thing you need to do once you've set all this up is go into your overclocking profile, basically the settings to save what you've done. Now, maybe what you wanna do is first save what you have before you touch anything, before you overclock, go into the profile, um, overclock settings, and just save a profile. So you can see there I saved um, overclock, overclocking profile one was meaning meant no change. I didn't do nothing to the system. So that way, if I need to revert back, I can always go back to the original settings. Uh, number two was at four gigahertz. So I was doing some testing there. And then number three is where I'm at now at 4.1 uh, gigahertz. So you can actually save your settings. Now, here I am in Windows 10. I enabled the power options to be high performance. So that way, again, I'm not having any uh, CPUs parked. There's no throttling. I'm using the full capabilities of the CPU. So I did that. Um, and also you can see here the voltages and uh, the memory timings so it matches with what we have in the bias basically okay now when it's on uh, no load the voltages will be lower when it's on full load the voltages might go a little bit higher right so the system is compensating for that um, system power usage well we're gonna get to that in a moment but look at the temperatures here on idle it's about 45 degrees Celsius I'll round it up and the voltage is at 1.416 running again all cores at 4.1 gigahertz, as you can see right there. That's pretty darn fast, considering that I got eight cores, 16 threads, and everything's locked in. So pretty good results there without the voltage being uh, extremely high, like I've seen on other people overclocking. They put their voltages way too high unnecessarily. Um, now, the temperatures on full load did go quite high. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. Uh, 86 degrees Celsius on full load. Now. Are you gonna be running all the threads and every core at 100% constantly? Well, the only way I can see you doing that is maybe if you're uh, rendering video, converting, uh, encoding, and doing a lot of process intensive calculations that require that, maybe, maybe. And if you do, well, the mass maximum CPU full load that uh, the whole system got at the wall was 224 watts, that's the total system. Um, on idle, it was just 51 watts, the total of the system itself. The, the CPU only uses 15 watts on idle and on full load, 125 watts. Okay, so that way you get an idea. Um, obviously, the wattage did increase from when it was at default. Uh, default on full load, I think it was around 186 total for the entire system and 115 for the uh, CPU only. Now, great deal for around $500 compared to what you're getting with other CPUs from Intel. If you are wondering about the benchmarks now for it overclocked, click here on this so you can watch the benchmarks of this system and get an idea on how well it performs. Next, I'm gonna be reviewing on this system the Toshiba OCZ uh, NVMe, that's the uh, Express PCI Express card that has SSD on it. Terrific, very fast. 
and um, can't wait to show you guys that. So comment below, let me know what you think about the overclocking, and uh, again, thank you for watching.